In this video, I'm going to show you how to estimate the power associated with a independent sample t-test. And it's going to be based on Cousineau's syntax that he published in his paper. And in the textbook, I note that there are a couple of steps associated with the procedure. And the first one is to calculate the critical t-value that you need to input in the syntax. So in order to get the critical t-value, you need to specify the probability level and you need to specify the degrees of freedom. And you can do that in Excel with the t inverse function. So type in equals, which is a function, t dot inverse dot two times t. So that's basically two-tailed. It's not two times t, but it's a two-tailed portion of the distribution. And we are testing alpha 0.05, so we want 5% of the distribution. And the degrees of freedom are total n minus 2. And in this case, we've got 40 people in each group. So that was 40 ratings from faces with glasses and 40 ratings of faces without glasses. So that's a total sample size of 80. So we got 78 degrees of freedom. And click OK. And then we get the critical t value, which we need to input into a syntax file. And to get this type of syntax file to run, you first have to put any value just to get a variable started in SPSS. But really what you need is a syntax file. So once you put the number 1 or any number you want, just so that when we click run, the syntax file will work. So then I would suggest that you just copy and paste the compute function that I included in the textbook. I'm just going to show you how it works. So copy and paste. And it's going to make reference to a t distribution here. And you have to input the critical t value here. And I've already done that. So that value, I, you can't just dream that up. You have to actually get it from the t inverse two-tailed function in Excel. That's where I got that number. And then once you have that number, you have to input the effect size in hedges g or Cohen's d terms. So in this case, it was an effect size of 0.51. And I'm estimating the power for a study with a Cohen's D of 0.51. And the sample size is 40 for group 1 and 40 for group 2. And then I need to subtract 2. So this is a degrees of freedom calculation. And then here we have technically the half of the average of the sample size. And in this case, because the sample size was equal, it ends up to be 40. So 40 divided by 2. And so when I click Run, I will get power estimate based on the new variable that SPSS calculated. And we can see here that if I increase the decimal places, I get 0.6137. So the power associated with an independent sample t-test that has an effect size of about medium, you know, it's very close to 0 0.50, a medium effect size with a sample size of basically 80, I get power of 0.61, which is less than the 0 0.80 that I should be aiming for. Now I should mention that this syntax actually assumes that the sample sizes are equal. I treat the issue of unequal sample sizes in the estimation of power in the advanced portion of the textbook. And it actually does make a difference what the smallest sample size is in the groups. So this is how you can run the function. Nifty little thing to calculate power for an independent sample t-test. 